When you're actually using a modern web application, what's actually happening is you're interacting with a client-side application, but you are sending requests to a web server in order to actually do things. So for common operations like create a new item in a list, what's actually happening is the client application running inside of your browser will send a request to a server. And then the server does the operation and then it responds to the client application. That means the application you see inside of your browser doesn't actually save data or find data or anything like that. It communicates with the server application and then the server application is responsible for saving data and uh, getting all of the data that you require inside of the client application here. The only thing the browser requires is a way to communicate with the server. And the dominant way to do that over the web is using HTTP methods. When you want to make an HTTP server that responds to HTTP requests, you can use almost any language. Uh, today we're going to look at how we can do it with C-sharp using C-sharp web API. In order to actually use C-sharp and build a web API, you need to download .NET, which is the framework used for building these web APIs. If you don't already have it downloaded, there is a download page for getting the SDK plus the runtime. When you go through the installation, you will also get the .NET CLI and you can use that one to check your installation. So if you open up any terminal and use the command .NET dash dash info, uh, then you will get information about your installation. If you correctly have installed .NET, including the CLI, then you should be able to get the uh, SDK version listed here and the runtime version listed here. So now we're gonna build the first HTTP server with .NET and C Sharp. So on my machine, I happen to have a directory where I put all of my projects. So here I'll just create one called the Web API Demo, and then I'll go into Web API Demo, and then I'll use the .NET CLI to create a new project in here. .NET new web is the command you're gonna be using. So you can use any uh, IDE or text editor you want. I personally like the one called Writer by JetBrains. Uh, so I'm gonna just open the directory we created with Writer. If your machine doesn't recognize the command Writer inside of your shell, what you can do is just open up Writer manually and then go to open and then just find the directory where you built the project and then just open that. If you click on this drop down menu here, you should be able to see both file system and solution. If you have your project open and you don't see solution as a possible overview, what you should be doing is try to locate the file that ends in CSPROJ. Try to open that one manually with your IDE and then you should be able to see the solution overview. So for me, uh, the project is called Web API. So I will locate the project file inside of the web API demo here. And, uh, and that way you should be able to see the solution overview here. Now you, you can both run it by just right clicking this and it'll start up the HTTP server uh, and then it'll say hello world here because that is the default application it will just create for you. Alternatively, uh, you can open up a terminal and then inside of the directory where you have the project file, you can write .NET run. The .NET run is a universal command for running .NET uh, programs, not just uh, web APIs, but also console applications and all the types of applications. So let's just inspect what it's actually saying here. Uh, we're writing .NET run, then it goes through a building phase. So it's compiling the program. And now it's saying now listening on and some kind of port. So listening means that the server is running. We will often also refer to the server as an API. API is like a generic term used a lot in programming. Uh, so you would classify this program as being a REST API. You will often also hear the word web API. This is like the term that Microsoft has named their REST API product. So you start the program and then the API is going to be listening for requests on some address. That means that HTTP methods that are directed towards this address here, they will hit the server and then the server will do something. And then it's gonna respond back to whatever was the caller. So if you open up a browser, 
you send something to this request here, then the browser is going to get a response. Uh, that's why we had this uh, hello world here just before. You don't uh, need to listen on this port. You can also go into the launch settings here, and then you can just manually edit the address at which it's listening on. Personally, I like to use 5000 because it's a, it's a number I can remember. Uh, and then if you run it now, it's going to say listening on localhost port 5000. So I'll just really quickly show you what kind of contents you will have inside of the directory when you create a new web API. Uh, first of all, the .idea folder here. This is just a folder that governs how you use your IDE. This is not actually part of your application's source code. The bin folder here, this is for compiled objects. So this is not something you adjust manually. This is just for when you're running the application behind the scenes this is actually what .NET is compiling your program into. And uh, the object folder here, this is for temporary files. If you, for instance, delete the uh, object folder here and you go into your program.cs, then it doesn't know what these types are because these types, they're actually existing inside of the object folder. But if you uh, rerun the program, it's gonna go through a building phase and now you're going to get the bin and the object folder back again. And now you'll see that the type here is now known by your IDE. There's, of course, also the launch settings. Uh, and then there are two configuration files here with settings. Notice they have uh, two files that are almost identically named. So these are the settings for your program. So when you are in development mode, which means when you're building the application, you might have some preferences and then when you are delivering the software for a customer, then you would be in production mode and you might have other preferences. That's why you have several files. And, and this uh, one without any development or production or staging or anything else, these are just the default preferences that can be overridden by these more specific ones. Currently, uh, they, they are almost identical. So I'll just delete one of them so we have as few files as possible to work with. This is the entire source code of the application. So what you'll see here is you're creating something called a web application builder, and then you are turning that into a web application, which you are then running. So when it's actually running, it only has one behavior, and that is when you are sending get requests, to this address here. This just means the base address. Then you will get the response, hello world. That's why if you put in a protocol here and then base address localhost, that just means your own machine and port 5000, then you will get hello world. If we change this to something like ASD and you run again, then you get the same response if you go to ASD and if you pick something else, then it's gonna say, we don't know what that is. Uh, so essentially, we just have a program that just responds with some text when we request it. The syntax that we have here is one of the newer uh, variants of syntax in .NET APIs. Uh, we call this a minimal API. And uh, this is contrary to the other construct, which is called controllers layout. So now I'm going to show you what this here would look like if you use what we call controllers. So using the filter variable here, there are something called services and they have something called add controllers. Uh, and down here, I'll add something called map controllers. So that is uh, actually activating them for the API to be used. And now once you have those lines, if you make a folder here, uh, I'll just pluralize this. Uh, so it says controllers. And uh, here I'll make one called a uh, user controller. So I'll just uh, use a very simple example. So we're using the term controller to refer to something that is the entry point into our server application for HTTP client applications. So the clients, they're always the ones sending a request and then the server is responding. But the point at which we're actually trying to hit in the server application is gonna be a controller method. 
So the controller methods, they generally have a signature where they are responding with something called an action result. So if you make a method here that says public action results and then give it some name like get something. So let's say you make a response here and the response is a hello. And then what you actually return is okay. And then you wrap the response inside of the okay method here. Uh, currently, it's going to say we don't know what this okay here is. And that's because the okay type exists within something called controller base. So if you extend controller base, now this is completely valid here. So every single time you change your code, even though your API is currently running, you actually have to restart the API. So you control C here in order to uh, shut down the application. And then you can press up, then you can press enter. Uh, you will often also see people use a command .net watch. Uh, supposedly it should be able to rebuild the application once you change the source code, but it doesn't always work. So sometimes you have to go in and make a manual uh, rerun. So in order for us to actually be able to locate this exact method. Uh, what we preferably should be doing is granting it a route and granting it an HTTP verbal. So the verb refers to what we're trying to do. This is just an HTTP convention. We have conventions like when you want to get data, you use something called HTTP get. If you want to delete data, there's something called HTTP delete. So these are just conventions that are trying to convey what is the intended action here? And then the route here refers to the address that the client must supply along with the verb in order to actually hit this method here. We will also often refer to, to this as an endpoint. So the endpoint HTTP get at the base address will trigger this. Uh, so if you open up a browser and go to localhost 5000, you get hello, because this is what we're responding. If you open up the uh, networks tab inside of your browser and refresh here, uh, you will also see all of the data about the request. So for instance, we're returning OK, with, which is the status code 200. You can also see that in the networks tab. If you don't know how to find the uh, networks tab, you can always just right click, click inspect, and then there should be a tab called network here. The most common way to actually respond to requests is transmitting something that we call JSON. So uh, almost all REST API frameworks that exist in the world, they will have a way to turn objects into JSON. We call that serialization. So uh, if you make a response here and you just create a new anonymous object, and you might say something like a username equals uh, and you respond with that. This is a C-sharp object, but the C-sharp object must be turned into this JSON thing, which is what we also refer to as a markup object. So uh, if you now go here, fresh, and now you see this syntax here. This is a curly bracket syntax, and this is a key inside of a JSON object, and this is a value. And then there's a little colon here. Uh, so this is what your browser will present you with when you get uh, to uh, localhost port 5000 with an HTTP request, makes this object here, then it wraps it inside of status code, and then it serializes it behind the scenes such that you get a nice, nice JSON object. I know that uh, we use curly brackets here, but these curly brackets, they, they, they're just the C-sharp syntax for creating a, an object. You could also say new date time object, for instance. And uh, if you run this one here, uh, you will get this as like a default uh, date time object. Uh, so the, the, the curly brackets here, they don't have anything to do with the curly brackets in JSON. Uh, this is just the JSON representation of a, a, a date time object. The most common thing to do, however, is to use some kind of a class that represents an object. So if you have a, a class called user, class user, and then the user has a property name. It's set. This is how we create a property in C sharp. So let's instantiate a user here. Bar user equals new user. 
uh, we can uh, manually set the property like name like this, uh, or we can instantiate it right away like this here. Uh, these are both valid syntaxes. But let's say that uh, you actually want the HTTP client to create a user. So here, just imagine that we have a, a database uh, saving to BB. So what I'll just do here is a, I'll create a public static class imaginary BB. So here I'll just make a list of user objects uh, and then I'll just call this DB. Uh, so this is uh, just my imaginary uh, list of um, of users here. So I'll, I'll declare this as static. So what I'll do is uh, I'll take the imaginary DB, DB add, uh, and then I'll make a new user for every single time that someone requests this HTTP endpoint here. So that means that now what we're trying to do is the HTTP client is using some uh, web application with a graphical user interface. So they're creating a new user for themselves. And then what that graphical application is doing is it's sending an HTTP method to our uh, API here. So it's going to hit this point here and then it's going to go into our imaginary database and now it's going to insert a user. So the way we do this is uh, we say we are accepting a user object here. Um, and then we are putting it into the imaginary database. And then we are responding with the uh, imaginary database.db here. So this is, <laughs> this is a very simple and crude implementation where an HTTP client has to send some data and then they're just getting all of the users back. And because we're creating data here, I'm going to write HTTP post to indicate that you're trying to create a user. And then I'm going to add user as the route here. And we cannot use the address bar for sending the request anymore because the address bar sends a GET request. We need some other way to send it. We could use another HTTP client, uh, but I still want to demonstrate this inside of a browser. So we can use something called NSWAG to actually set up a little graphical representation of the API that you can use to test the API with. So inside of your application here, you can right click the project, go to uh, this NuGet package manager here, and then search for NSWAG. And then there is a package called NSWAG uh, ASP Net Core. Add this to your project here. Go into your program.cs file where you're actually starting the application and then builder services add open API document. So there is a document that it documents the API automatically for you. And then what you can do with that document is send requests to the server. So it's like a mock front end. And then down here you have to write app.use open API and then app use swagger UI. So these are actually what enables the usage of that document. So you have to restart your application here. You can also just say yes to always rebuild the application. And uh, then what you do is you go to slash swagger here. So if you go to slash swagger, it will open up the document that makes a, the little representation of your API. So if you open up this accordion here, you can click this little try it out and then you can supply a name like uh, Bob, press execute here, and then you'll get uh, the list uh, which contains all these imaginary users here. So that could also be Alice. Uh, and now you have Bob and Alice inside of the database here. So this is of course uh, brilliant, right? You are sending HTTP requests and then you are getting a response with all of the things that you are accumulating back. Currently, what you're sending here is actually uh, something we call a query parameter. Uh, you would, in a realistic setting, use something called the HTTP body, but we will get to that in the next video where we talk more about how to build controller methods.